Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Zoo King, game designed by Evan Johnson and published by Saratoga Toy and Game Co. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. In Zoo King, players are competing against each other to produce the best zoo they can. Players will compete against each other to purchase the best staff, facilities and animals from a common display in order to create the most competitive and most awarded zoo. Players will ride the ups and downs that come with the different events in the game before competing for the all important awards. And the first player to win the required amount of awards wins the game. To set up the game, first separate all of the decks. The money cards will be split by denomination and placed face up, the other decks face down. Deal each player $1,000 in starting money, which the player may hold secretly in hand. Next you'll create a single deck of event and awards cards, but to do this you'll have to layer the deck. First shuffle the events and the awards separately into face down decks. Then randomly remove three event cards and return them to the box without looking at them. Now create the deck as described on the help card for your player count. For example, in the two player game, you'd start by putting four awards cards on the bottom of the deck. On top of that, you'd place four events, three awards, four more events, three more awards, and finally the remaining 16 events. Follow the equivalent setup at three or four players. Now it's time to choose starting cards. Go through the staff and facilities deck and lay face up every perpetual card in the deck, which is anything showing the infinity icon in the top right corner. Choose a first player and in turn order going clockwise around the table, each player will now choose one starting card from all of these ones available, paying its cost as shown in the top left corner of the card using some of their starting money. A card that shows no cost is free, and a card that shows two costs costs the left amount, which is in colour, in a two or three player game, and the right amount, which is in grey, in a four player game. Place your starter card in front of you to start your zoo, and return any money spent to the bank. Cards that were not selected are now gathered up, ready to be shuffled back into the rest of the staff and facilities deck. The perpetual cards you've been choosing from have an ongoing effect during the game, and now you'll be mixing them in with all of the cards that have a once-off effect during the game. That is, you'll resolve the card only at the point that you acquire it. Now create the starting markets by laying out a row of five cards from the animal deck and five cards from the staff and facilities deck. Leave room for a discard pile in each row. Keep the bank and the events and awards pile nearby and you're now ready to play. Play in Zoo King begins with the player who took the last choice of starting card and proceeds anti-clockwise around the table. A player's turn takes place in three steps. Firstly, you will draw and resolve the top card from the event deck, and this may be positive, negative, and it may affect all players or just you. Then you'll have the opportunity to acquire or purchase up to two cards from the market, paying the cost of that from your hand in order to add it to your zoo. Then finally, you'll replenish the markets up to five cards each, and play will pass to the next player counterclockwise. Once enough event cards have been resolved, you'll come to a cluster of award cards in the event deck. If it is your turn and there is an award card on top, then you'll suspend the game and draw and resolve the award card. It will give you a set of criteria and the award will be given to whichever player's zoo meets that criteria the best. You'll continue resolving awards as long as there are awards on top of the deck. And then once there's an event card on top of the deck again, play will pick up where it left off with the current active player resolving the event as usual. The game continues in this way until one player has won the minimum number of awards for victory, which is three in a three or four player game, or 
four in a two-player game. So now let's look at each step in more detail. The first step of your turn is to draw and resolve an event, and quite simply, draw the top card and then follow the text. There are two types of card, green and red. Green cards are always positive for the player who drew them, and often for other players as well. In particular, these are the main way of earning more money during the game. The admission event, of which there are several, will give all players $100. Other events will give you a bonus, but also force you to choose an opponent to get the same bonus. While the animal rescue event lets you gain a new animal by taking it from an opponent. Then there are red events, which are generally bad for the player who drew them. This includes such things as trading out exhibits with opponents, losing an animal to escape, or being forced to pay some money. For all events in the game, if you are unable to follow the text that's shown on the card, then there is no effect. And do note that many of the game's perpetual staff cards have an effect which protects you from the negative effects of some of these events. Should there ever be insufficient funds in the bank to completely resolve an event, then give the money out, starting from the current player and going counterclockwise in turn order, until all the money is gone. And if multiple players are required to discard cards from the same event, then this is likewise done in turn order. Once you've drawn and resolved your one event card for the round, you'll now proceed to your actions phase. In your actions phase, you may take up to two actions, and each action involves acquiring one card. There are four different ways that you can acquire a card in the game. Firstly, you may purchase any one of the 10 face-up cards in the market. To do this, pay the cost showing in the top left corner of the card, and then buy it and add it to your zoo. Your second option is to draw the top card from one of the two decks and then make a decision based on what the card is and its price whether you want to purchase that for full price or not. You can either purchase it or place it on top of the discard pile. Your third option is to purchase a card from the top of one of the two discard piles. If you do this, you get a $100 discount on the price of the card. So here, this $300 bald eagle would cost only $200. You cannot do this to acquire a card that was put in the discard pile earlier on the same turn, whether that be by event or action. Your last option is to make an animal exchange, and this can only be done with animals, not with staff or facilities. Choose one animal that is already in your zoo, and choose another animal that is either in the market or on top of the discard pile with an equal or lower cost or an equal or lower number of stars. Take the new animal that you've chosen into your zoo and discard the animal you're exchanging onto the top of the discard pile. Any cards you acquire during these actions are placed face up into your zoo where all players can see them. You are never allowed to acquire a second copy of the same staff or facility card, but you are allowed to have a second copy of an animal and will in fact gain a $100 bonus if you create a breeding pair in this way, gaining that money as soon as you add the second animal to your zoo. There's only a small number of animals which have a second copy in the deck. Most of the animals are unique and so these bonuses will not come very often. Many staff and facility cards will give you a discount on a certain type of animal. So here, for example, the Conservation Center gives you a $100 discount on endangered animals, represented by this E. So this panda would cost $300. The aviary lets you acquire birds for free, such as this great horned owl. This would now cost nothing. You can also stack discounts together. So these two discounts would let you get the African gray parrot for only $200 but the lowest cost for any animal is free. Once you have finished taking up to two actions, you will replenish any vacant slots in the two market rows, and then play will pass to the next player anti-clockwise. Zoo King is all about winning awards for your zoo. The first player to win three awards, or four in a two-player game, 
will win the game. There are 10 different awards in the game, and the same 10 awards are used in each game, but the order in which they'll come out of the deck is what will differ. Each award has a criterion and a tiebreak. If multiple players are tied for the main award, you will check the tiebreaker, and if players are still tied on the tiebreaker, then no one wins the award. You'll simply place it on the bottom of the deck, potentially to be tried again later in the game. These four awards are all granted to the player who has the most of a certain type of animal in their zoo. Top Conservationist is for most endangered animals, High Flyer is for most birds, Big Cat King is for most felines, and Most Dangerous is for the most dangerous animals. These animal types can all be identified with icons in the top right corner of the cards. This E represents an endangered animal. This icon represents a bird. This icon represents a feline. And this icon represents a dangerous animal. For each of these awards, a tie goes to the player who has the most total prestige stars among the corresponding type of animal. In a similar vein, most animals goes to the player who has the most total animal cards. And again, in the event of a tie, the total star value of those animals breaks the tie. The most diverse and best themed awards relate to the animal habitats. Each animal has a habitat type, which is represented by the colour of its border and the text printed at the bottom of the card. Some animals have two separate habitats. For best themed, count up the total number of animals in your single largest habitat, including animals which are half in that habitat and half in another. So here it would be six in the savannah. Whichever player has the highest number wins the award, with once again the tiebreaker being the total count of stars in the habitat. The most diverse award is won by the player who represents the most of the six different habitats in their zoo. The polar and desert habitats are substantially rarer than all of the others, making this potentially a difficult one to fight for. In this case, the tiebreaker has nothing to do with stars and goes to the player who has the most reptiles, represented by this icon. The Staff of the Year award goes to the player with the most staff cards in their zoo, with once again the tiebreaker being total stars on staff. Most Prestigious Zoo goes to the player who has the most total stars across animals, staff and facilities, with ties going to the player who has the most five star animals. And finally, Most Profitable Zoo goes to the player with the most money in hand at the time of the award. There is no tiebreaker for this award. The first player to claim three awards, or four in a two-player game, immediately wins the game. If, due to there being several tied awards, you get through the entire deck and start seeing awards again for the second time, then in the event of a second tie for the same award, the award is shared between all tied players. If, as a result of this, two players meet the threshold for victory at the same time, then those players share the win. And that's how to play Zoo King. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Zoo King is going to Kickstarter, so we will put the link in the description below when it is live, so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. See you next time.